Hello everyone, in this lecture we're going to be talking about the acidity based on the quantitative approach. So another way of saying we'll talk about what a Ka is, but most importantly we will be focusing on the pKa. So I'll talk about the relation between the Ka and the pKa and um, almost 99% of the times or even more when you take organic chemistry we're going to be using the values of pKa to determine the relative acidity of an acid. We don't we barely talk about Ka's when you do the organic chemistry. The Ka is only for the gen chem courses. Now suppose if I have a very strong acid, and I can take an example of maybe HCl. Remember HCl is one of the binary acids that's a very strong acid. When it reacts with water, or another way of saying when you dissolve that in water, it reacts with water to make H3O plus and Cl minus. So all those guys going to be aqueous, water is going to be liquid and we usually draw the arrow going one way telling that this is going to be a very strong acid but if I have another generic acid and I can probably talk about CH3COOH which is going to be the acidic acid when we do drop that in the water we don't really get a full ionized version of it but rather it partially ionizes where it makes CH3COO minus and plus H3O plus aqueous. So this tells you you have the reaction going both ways, or another way of saying there is an equilibrium set up for this particular reaction. And to figure out how much of this base, uh, how much of this acid has been dissociated into the ions, or how much of this H3O plus has been made we can write a equilibrium constant expression which is going to be the Ka in this particular case so just in another equilibrium constant expression but since it's in terms of the acid we write down A there so remember those are always going to be the concentrations of the products over the concentration of the reactants and in this particular case your products is going to be the CH3 COO minus, your other product is H3O plus, and then you have your reactants to be CH3 COOH. So what do you have learned in GenCam that if you have anything that's uh, liquid or solid you don't really include that into the equation or this equilibrium constant expression just because there is so high concentration of that or there's just plenty of that they are acting as like an solvent in that particular case now if the Ka value is high so think about that if Ka is high what can you tell about the relative concentration of your products compared to the reactants if your Ka is high you must have very high concentration of your products that means you will have a strong acid and in that particular case if you have high concentration of your products you're gonna have a lot of H3O plus being produced and as a result your acidity is gonna be high or your pH is gonna be low so high Ka reflect stronger acid now why don't we write the Ka for something like HCl that we have written on the top well that's because the Ka for those guys is going to be very high that's why you really go and write that out because there is going to be a complete dissociation of the HCl into the H3O plus and Cl minus so you barely have any reactant left over so you're only going to have the products and that's as a result the Ka is going to be very high so the take home message right now is going to be if you have a higher Ka and then that reflects into a lower pK, we'll talk about that in a minute. Higher Ka means you have a stronger acid and lower Ka means you have a weaker acid. And then that can be said about the bases as well. Your higher Kb, so now we're talking about the bases because the Kb is going to be the equilibrium constant expression for the bases. Then you're talking about a stronger base, but if you have a lower Kb, then you're talking about a weaker base. Now how does the Ka, the pKa really relates?
you can always figure out the pKa value by doing a negative log of the Ka, just like how you would do pH to be equals to negative log of uh, H plus concentration or H3O plus concentration. It's the same story here. The pKa can be calculated by doing negative log of the Ka. So that's why a high Ka, so let's say high Ka is going to reflect into giving you lower pKa. The lower the pKa, stronger the acid going to be. If I have an acid, and I'm talking about the conjugate base of that acid, how would I really relate the pKa and the pKb of that? pKb of that. So acid is going to have the pKa, and the conjugate base is going to have the pKb. I can relate the pKa and the pKb of the acid and conjugate base pairs by doing pKa plus pKb is going to be equal to 14. So this is something you guys probably learned in Gen Chem 2. Uh, not very commonly used, but what we're going to be using here is obviously your pKa. Now keep in mind your strong acids, so the strong acids we have, they have high Ka and they're going to have low pKa and your six strong acids like HCl, HBr, um, in, that, in that list you're even going to have a negative pKa values. Your pKa value typically ranges from 20, negative 20 all the way to 50. So obviously if you're on the negative side that means you're a very strong acid but then if you're on somewhere around 50, then it means you're a very weak acid. And then the same can be said about the pKbs. If you have a negative pKb, so let's say the pKb, if it's low, it's going to be a strong base. And if the pKb is high, then it's going to be a weak base but focus more on the pKa values rather than the pKb values, but that's because that's the that's commonly used, that's the standard uh, organic chemistry used to figure out the acidity. But always keep in mind, if you have a stronger acid, the conjugate base of that acid is gonna be very weak. So it's just an opposite relation between one another. Let's look at some of the common functional groups here and their pKa values. I don't really have all the functional groups in there, just the common ones. So for all the other functional groups, you may have to look into your book to figure out what their pKa values are. The sulfuric acid is one of those oxy acid that's a, a strong acid. The pKa of uh, the sulfuric acid is going to be somewhere around 8 or 9. Um, now, you may find slightly different pKa values based on the book you're using, but it's all about um, you know, knowing kind of the range, not exact value. So this is going to be actually negative 8 or 9. So I'm going to erase that somewhere around negative 8. So I'll just give you a rough range. It's not going to be the same when you go from the book to the book and even if you look online they may have a slightly different values but this is more or less knowing the range of these pKa values and your conjugate base for that particular acid is going to be HSO4 1 minus now what's the easier way to draw the conjugate base or figure out how the conjugate base is going to look like anytime you have a sulfuric acid you get rid of the or anytime you have an acid you get rid of the proton and see how it looks like so after getting rid of one proton, the H2SO4 looks like HSO4 one minus. We can talk about HBr. The HBr, um, the pKa approximately is also between eight and nine. So let's just say negative nine here. What's gonna be the conjugate base for that? Well, remember after losing the proton, how it's gonna look like? Well, we're just gonna have the bromide there. This is, the next one is hydronium. The hydronium pKa is going to be 1.7, negative 1.7, rather still a strong acid. And what's going to be the conjugate base for that? Well, go ahead and get rid of the proton and see what it looks like. 
after getting rid of the proton, this is what we're going to have. And then this next one here, this is an acidic acid, so we have this proton, acidic proton here. So if I go ahead and get rid of that, uh, this is, well, not here, this is how it's going to look like. So that's your conjugate base. And the pKa of that is going to be approximately 4.74. So now your pKa is kind of getting bigger, so that means you're kind of going into the weaker acid. So that's how you want to be looking at uh, those guys. And uh, this next one is in a phenol. Uh, we, I did draw the, the conjugate base of that already after losing that proton. The pKa of the phenol is going to be about 9 to 10. And then we got water, the pKa of the water is about 15.7 and the conjugate base is obviously going to be getting rid, after getting rid of this proton, see how it looks like? We're going to have just the HO or the OH minus there. Then we got this example of alcohol there, after getting rid of this proton, we're going to have this alkoxide here with having the oxygen with a negative charge. The alcohols are a little bit more basic than the water. The pKa of this particular alcohol is going to be somewhere around 16 or bigger, depending on how many alkyl groups you have. So you can clearly see water having a lower pKa than the alcohol. Water is actually going to be a little bit more acidic than the alcohol. And then we got these alpha proton of, uh, with respect to the carbonyl. So the pK of these guys is going to be anywhere between 19 to 23, depending on what other groups we have. So they are also going to be a little bit less acidic than the alcohols in the water. And we got this, uh, after, lose, after losing this proton right there, we're going to have the conjugate base that's going to be looking like this, carbon having the negative charge. And then we got these alkynes. Alkynes, if, especially if it's a terminal alkyne, is going to be carrying a acidic proton because after losing that proton, this is how it's going to look like. We're going to have carbon that's bearing the negative charge is a triple bonded carbon and the pKa of that is going to be around 25. So it's less acidic than you would see in an alpha proton around the carbonyl bond. And then we got ammonia. Ammonia's pKa is about 38. And then we got this double bonded carbon or alkenes. The alkenes pKa is about 44, 45. And then finally, these alkenes are going to be your weakest acid out there. The pKa of the alkenes is going to be around 15. So higher the pKa, weaker the acid is going to be. So that's why I have written down here. So that's your weak acid. But then on the top there, it's going to be a strong acid. So that's how the order is going to look like going down. So as you go down, the acidity decreases. But when we look on the left, uh, when we look on the right side there, and we talk about the stability or the basicity of these conjugate bases, um, it's just going to be the opposite. If you have a strong acid, the conjugate base of that acid is going to be actually a weaker base. So this particular, on the top, you're going to have a weak base. But then if I talk about the conjugate base of a weak acid, which in this particular case is going to be this carbon with a negative charge, it's going to be a very strong base. So they're just going to be opposite to one another. So just memorize, just understand the order. If you're dealing with a strong acid, the conjugate base is going to be weak. And if you're dealing with a weak acid, then the conjugate base is going to be strong. So that's how you're going to be reading these pKa values. So like I said, I did not include every single functional group in there, but just kind of from a basic idea. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.